My name is Kaushalendra Singh, as uh, said. I'm in West Virginia University in Division of Forestry and Natural Resources. There I do research on paralysis and gasification of all kind of stuff. And the teaching wise, I do teach bio-based energy systems and physical properties of wood. This piece of research I did when I was a graduate student uh, at the University of Georgia. And the full content of this research paper, you can find it in Journal of Air and Waste Management, published in 2010. And the co-authors are listed on this paper. Uh, I'll talk about little bit on background, then I'll go into methods. I'll cover some of the results, especially on pyrolysis product yields, properties of biochar and condensate, efficiency of the process, and some nu nutrient distribution. And then I'll hit on some key conclusions. Now, we all, uh, most of us eat chicken, okay? and it's pretty tasty. It does, whether you eat buffalo wings or uh, tender chickens or Walmart from Kroger, anywhere. The good part is, that's why our poultry industry is producing a lot and lot of chicken and poultry products. At the same time, they also produce a byproduct for which we are here for. And uh, according to my general knowledge, roughly two pounds of litter is produced in growing one four pound bird. <laughs> So we do produce a lot of poultry waste. And Georgia was uh, ranked number one in the US in production of poultry and poultry products. So Georgia also has a lot of poultry litter. And that's why we did this study. A poultry litter is a very good thing. Like chicken is tasty to us, poultry litter is tasty to crops. So if you, we can put it on, a crop uh, production areas, it's a very good source of nutrients, but it's not a balanced nutrient. And that's why when uh, we put it for nitrogen, phosphorus exceeds the limits. For example, um, in the top US maps, the dark blue areas represent um, uh, locations which where poultry um, phosphorus is more than 75 pounds per acre per loading. And most of this phosphorus ends up in our streams. And that's why you all are here. Nutrient management. I'm not the nutrient management guy. So what we can do about it? Well, you can do nutrient management plant and plan and so kind of things. Uh, the other speaker spoke about burning it or doing some kind of energy technologies. And that's where I will head to. There was one piece of work which demonstrated that um, you can send just nutrients out of the watershed. And sending poultry litter out of the watershed is not easy. It's a moisture rich um, stuff, hard to transport. So one of the research work demonstrated that if we use a screen, roughly one millimeter size, and screen it, you will get a nutrient rich fraction you can transport it easily out of the region. And you can use remaining coarse fraction, which will be mostly wood chips and um, maybe dead words. You can use that for energy. Now, as spoken before, we have three options of, for energy technologies. Technically combustion, paralysis, and gasification. And they all involve heating. The only difference is that in combustion, we supply four times the oxygen needed for a regular combustion process. In gasification, the oxygen supply is roughly quarter. So instead of producing carbon dioxide, we end up producing carbon monoxide and hydrogen. In paralysis, we completely eliminate oxygen. So in paralysis also, we heat but we don't burn, cook. And at the end of cooking, we get biochar, bio oil, and gases. All three are energy products. So we thought, let's combine these two technologies. 
we'll combine a screening and paralysis and let's see what happens. Our goal was to do screening to get fine fraction for fertilizer applications and get the coarse fraction and do paralysis and get the energy products by oil, biochar and gases. The objective of this particular research was to document the effect of fractionation using a screen size 0.85 millimeter, paralysis temperature and heating rate on production, nutrient content and gross heating values of char and by oil. So to do this research we sampled poultry farm, poultry litter from three different poultry farms in Georgia. Uh, so we wanted to capture a big um, spectrum, that's why we chose three different poultry farms. Once collected, we stored it under uh, freezing conditions to avoid microbial decay and we gave total of 10 different treatments. The first two were our control, which means we had raw and coarse fraction without any paralysis. The remaining eight treatments were combination of three factors. The type raw and coarse, heating rate 10 and 30 degrees Celsius a minute, temperature 300 or 500 degrees Celsius. Once treated, we got poultry litter uh, converted into bio and bio oil. We did not capture any gases. For this biochar and bio oil, we characterized it uh, to look into the properties and finally we calculated efficiency and some nutrient distribution. This was the reactor actually we used to cook our poultry litter and it has three different sections. This was the main reactor, paralysis reactor. This was the water condenser to condense by oil and this was ice cool condenser to condense a remaining condensate. So we stored our poultry, we kept our poultry litter in bucket number 17 and kept it inside a sealed reactor and we const continuously monitored temperature at the center of the biomass to make sure that everything is heated evenly. After sealing, we purged the system with nitrogen for a roughly 10 minutes continuously to flush out any air present and after that we heated the system to desired temperature. Once heated, volatiles were evolved which were first condensed into this water cooled condenser and collected condensate into bucket number 8. The remaining vapors were condensed into this ice bath and the leftover gases were released to atmosphere after a little cleanup. So here are some of our results. When we looked at our pyrolysis product yields, char and condensate, we noticed that only temperature had significant effect and we were expecting that there was no magic in there. At 500 degrees Celsius, we produce roughly 47-48% biochar and roughly 30% of condensate. I want to mention here that we tried to achieve 10 degree or 30 degree Celsius a minute heating rate, but we could not. We did achieve that at the heating element, but not inside the biomass. The actual heating rate inside the biomass were no more than 2.5 to 2.9 degrees Celsius a minute, and that's the reality. After that, we poured our condensate into a funnel to see how will it settle. After 24 hours or so, we noticed three different layers in that settlement. The heavy layer, the medium layer and the light layer. The heavy layer was mostly kind of solid at room temperature. The middle layer was mostly orange like substance, very liquidy. The top layer was also liquidy but very black and chocolatey color. Then I tried to look into, okay, how much is it each layer? And based on our analysis, we noticed that roughly more than 80% was that orange liquidy substance. The 15, 14, 15% 15 was that top layer, 
uh, which we were interested in. And there was no uh, effect of any treatment factor on this cond condensate phase yield. After that, we try to analyze biochar and condensate for properties. And here you are looking at calorific values or BTU content uh, in megajoules per kilogram for all 10 treatments. Now, poultry litter, as said before, is not very good at energy content. Um, it varies from 13 to 17 megajoules per kilogram, where heating value of wood charcoal is roughly 28-29. The best charcoal from poultry litter was produced from coarse fraction and had energy content roughly 17 megajoules per kilogram. When looking at the approximate analysis result, which means moisture, volatile and ash content, um, we have raw and coarse fraction and biochar. When looking at the biochar, we notice that at 500 degree Celsius, we had more fixed carbon and high ash content present compared to biochar produced from 300 degree Celsius. And also coarse fraction, if you notice, had low ash content compared to raw and has a high volatile matter compared to uh, raw, which means the screening does improve these properties. When we look at the condensate properties, um, especially at the calorific value and moisture content, we notice that the light layer was rich in energy and it was liquidy, so you can use it as a boiler fuel. Well, energy was rich in solid um, heavy phase also, but it's not liquid. Most of the water ended up in middle layer. Then we looked at the nutrient distribution and also carbon distribution. As can be seen, at 500 degrees Celsius, most of the carbon is stayed in biochar and in light phase. And that's why we had more energy there. Nitrogen around 60 percent or more stayed in biochar and more than close to 27 percent stayed in medium phase. So probably uh, somebody needs to look at what we can do about it. Sulfur, around 55 percent stayed in biochar and some stayed in light phase. And this is the mineral data present um, that we had presented in that paper. But I want to draw your attention on this ammonium nitrogen and nitrate nitrogen. After pyrolysis, it, it, we kind of completely lose both of these. And I also um, went ahead and did one test on arsenic content. It was 42 milligrams per kilogram. Now, I was new to poultry litter, so I was wondering where did it come from? And somebody told me uh, from a research paper that uh, it is fed to poultry in form of uh, poultry feed. Then I looked into some South Carolina uh, nutrient management thing and there they had said if your poultry litter has 41 milligrams per kilogram arsenic then you, or below, then you can apply it to land, otherwise not. So this biojar is not good for land application. And as I said before, we lost roughly 99 percent of nitrogen. Uh, efficiency wise, we were able to capture roughly 70 percent of the total feed stock energy in our biochar. Uh, fixed carbon yield, which is ash free carbon, was roughly 25 percent, and that matches with our published data because maximum yield was reported for a hazelnut that is roughly 29 percent. Total carbon captured was roughly 65 percent at 300 degrees Celsius and 52 percent at 500 degrees Celsius in biochar. With that, we concluded that the best quality char we can produce for land application probably if we can get rid of arsenic would be at 300 degrees Celsius with heating value of 17 megajoules and you can capture around 70 percent of the feedstock energy. Um, by paralysis, we are uh, concentrating nutrients into biochar, almost doubling them. 
finally, uh, as said light phase we can use it as a boiler fuel, but it is only 5 percent of the total condensate. So, does it worth? I do not know, maybe biochar is the best option. Medium fraction which was roughly 85 percent captured 28 percent of nitrogen. Now, somebody probably needs to look at what we can do about that. Can we use it for something? Uh, we did not see that part. And our uh, research was funded by US EPA and here are our researchers I would uh, like to acknowledge Dr. Sid Thompson, Dr. Casey Das, Dr. Mark Rissi sitting here, Dr. John Worley. I think that is pretty much it. Any questions? Right. Uh, so, imagine that it's also an issue for any of the other uh, burning technologies. Could be. And remember, we just test one fuel for arsenic. You know, probably people need to look more when they are looking at nitrogen, phosphorus, and other things. They probably need to look at arsenic content also. It's, I'm not sure how it will affect. This is a result for just one sample testing. So, we really cannot conclude anything from there. <laughs> so it is off the hook. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, curious. Uh, I guess I'm coming from a different aspect here. The, the nutrient content of each of the fractions before you did the pyrolysis. Uh, you used that 0.85 millimeter. Uh, what percentage of the nutrients actually went into the fine fraction versus the coarse fraction? And, and how would that work using it as a fertilizer? That's a good question. We did not look at that component. Um, it was done by Pius in previous research. Um, probably in his paper it is present, but not in this one. Well, we're in about 60 percent of the nitrogen in the fine fraction, and about 85 to 90 percent of the phosphorus. John's done more than this. I can't remember. I can't remember. But it's, it's pretty substantial. You can really concentrate the nutrients in that. It seems like a good way of actually doing yeah. that fractionization is a good way of putting the nutrients out and then get a good energy component. But it also find it easier to handle the spread, maybe convert to different kinds of spread. Also decreases the seed in ratio, which helps us in availability. And any of these burning technologies, it would significantly reduce the amount of slagging you would get you remove that fine fraction and conserve the nitrogen as well as the That's what I'm looking at as well because you're losing your nitrogen through these. The ash cone process. And I would imagine like after getting fine fraction which would be more homogeneous, you know, e easy to spread versus spreading poultry.